As you might expect from a legend in the music biz like Rod Stewart, he has lived in some epic homes over the decades. There was his country estate in England back in the late 80s, a gated mansion in Beverly Hills, his current residence, which is an 18th century castle, and much more. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Throughout one of the most storied careers in pop music history, British singer-songwriter Rod Stewart has sold more than 120 million albums worldwide, officially making him one of the best-selling musical artists ever. But guess what? He's still willing to get his hands dirty to this day. Not bad for a kid who left school at the age of 15, only to wind up becoming a grave digger. And sure, back then Rod might have had higher ambitions of becoming a professional football player, but I'm pretty confident he's more than happy with how things turned out. After releasing his first solo album in 1969, Stewart's 1971 album Every Picture Tells a Story would catapult him into superstardom thanks to his monumentally massive single Maggie May, which eventually entered into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's 500 songs that shaped rock music. Long story short, in a career that spans over four decades, Rod Stewart has earned himself a net worth of $300 million, and he's dropped a large chunk of that on his real estate portfolio. For instance, in 1986, Rod bought a breathtaking country estate in England for the reasonable price of just over a million dollars. A handful of years later, he'd spent a considerable sum more for a mansion located in the gated community of Beverly Hills. Not content with a home on only the west coast of the United States, Stewart picked himself up an Oceanside house in Palm Beach, Florida in 1995 as well. As for Rod's most recent purchase, an 18th century castle that's located on 50 acres of land. Hey guys, it's Kara, back with another exclusive house tour here in Famous Entertainment, and today we're checking out the luxury properties of Rod Stewart. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat. Now let's get into this video. Rod Stewart's first home was very much like him, a one-of-a-kind English classic. This 19th century home is situated on a private 25-acre estate. Rod would live on this property for over 30 years, and while he would eventually sell it in 2019, he did so with a heavy heart. After moving into this home, Rod believed that he would spend the rest of his life here. But I guess when you begin to pick up other palatial estates, those original plans fall by the wayside. In a written statement provided to the listing agent, Rod wrote about this place. Till this day, the drive from the gate to the house takes my breath away. If only we could have picked the house up and moved it. It's very hard to say goodbye, and the kids still hope to go back for a visit one day. While I find it hard to believe that Rod's kids would ever forget this stunning 12,568 square foot home with six bedrooms and six bathrooms. First built in the 1800s, the main house was designed by Walter Ernest Tower and Charles Kempe, who were inspired by the design of Ancient House, also known as the Sparrow House in Ipswich. As a former Victorian stained glass designer, Kembe would install several examples of his handcrafted work throughout the home. In fact, this house has such history that Winston Churchill himself was said to have stayed here during the Blitz of World War II. When Rod finally moved in many, many years later, he discovered a house with plenty of heavy oak mullions, full height leaded bay windows, and detailed plasterwork, quality of which is usually found in the English counties of Suffolk and Essex. Standout rooms in the residence include four gigantic reception areas, a fully functioning game room with a bar, a work study, as well as a library. As for that dining room, well, if you ever have the opportunity to eat here, let's just say that you better dress to the nines in order to fit in accordingly. Once Rod bought the place, he hired English designer and socialite Nicholas Haslam to reinstate the residence's Jacobian and Victorian details, including elaborate plasterwork. And for you footy lovers out there, Rod's house also comes complete with a full-sized pitch. I mean, the man was once considering to become a professional after all. Of course, that's not everything. The home also includes an all-weather tennis court, a heated swimming pool, and a smaller cottage that overlooks the nearby lake. 
After spending a fair chunk of his life living in the Scorches estate, Rod would finally sell the home in 2019 for $6.15 million, or roughly about six times what he paid for it in 1986. First purchased in 1991 for a staggering $12.1 million, this 20,000 square foot mansion located in California's Beverly Park is probably worth as much as $50 or even $60 million today. But don't expect Rod to be moving out of it anytime soon. With a complex variety of moldings, walls, wood paneling, tapestries, and classically patterned marble flooring, Rod Stewart's Beverly Hills pad is about as unique as they come. When he was redesigning the space with professional interior designers, Rod wanted three strong threads to tie the home together. First, a palette of gold neutrals, sort of like the idea of candlelight at night. Second, he wanted a consistently high level of detail. That meant every corner had to be enhanced with glazed shadows and any given piece of furniture had to be professionally upholstered, even if it was with what some might consider conflicting styles. Finally, Rod wanted the lighting to be absolutely perfect, and by that I mean he wanted the lighting to be set so low that determining something like age would be practically impossible. With that idea in mind, each one of Rod's lights comes with five presets at the touch of a button, including the option of candlelight and dusk. Soon after moving in here, Rod would begin to turn this residence into his collector space, and over the years, his tastes have evolved considerably. There was a time when he only wanted to display Art Nouveau and Art Deco pieces. But lately, Rod has gravitated towards the idea of a stately home, taking his roots as an English gentleman more seriously. Now the corners of his rooms are populated with Roman busts and Italian blackmores. He's also developed a weakness for 18th century Italian and French pieces, like toy Scottish soldiers, model trains, and especially silver picture frames, which cover almost every tabletop in the house. But the collection that Rod is most proud of is his, his pre raphaelite paintings, which he believes is one of the largest in the world. About a third of his collection is hung on the entrance hall stairway, which include paintings of women on one side and couples on the other. When speaking with Architectural Digest about the work they've put into the home since it was purchased in the early 90s, Rod's designer told them, Rod wanted the house to feel like an English country estate. To us, that meant creating the home of a well-traveled individual who has amassed a collection of very fine antiques, art, and decorative arts over a lifetime and combining them in a neoclassical style interior. Now why don't we take a look at Rod's other North American home, this one located on the opposite coast. About four years after laying down eight figures to buy his home in California, Rod would drop $7.2 million on an oceanfront property located in Palm Beach, Florida. Worth an estimated $20 million today, Rod doesn't plan on selling this home anytime soon, and much like his California paradise, he's furnished this place head to toe in some truly beautiful decor. To begin with, huge white arched doors provide an entrance and exit to many of the rooms of the main residence, not to mention those grand outdoor spaces. So let's start there first. The exterior is painted in desert yellow and includes a gigantic wraparound patio where Rod has been known to choreograph his stage dancing from time to time. Moving on to the inside, the home is full of a bunch of stately rooms that fit right into Rod's lifestyle, like say the dedicated piano room, which is decorated with a ton of greenery as well as a classic white piano that sits in front of a nearly wall-sized mirror. Much like with Rod's California home, there are also framed photographs all over the place, including on top of his piano. Now, This is probably one of the two homes where Rod spends the most amount of time. As such, he and his family just so happened to be here when the pandemic set in, and this meant that Rod was stuck in Florida for much of 2020. Poor guy, right? Finally, in 2013, Rod also bought himself this beautiful estate for $6.2 million, located in the country of Essex, back in the UK. This palatial estate includes six bedrooms, five bathrooms, and an unforgettable view of the countryside. 
It would take Rod about three years of work before he was ready to move into this house, and not all of it would go according to plan. To begin with, Rod installed a football pitch into his new home and based the design off his favorite team, the Celtic Football Club. Now his custom made pitch includes a team flag behind both goals as well as a 3G turfed five sided field surrounded by fencing. Throughout the rest of the grounds, Rod had installed a rose garden, croquet lawn, an ornamental pond and several guest cottages. About a year after finally moving into the property, Rod had plans to install a large pool house that was meant to be around 65 feet in length. Unfortunately, that size was deemed too big, so he had to settle for a simple 50 foot pool instead. Rod made up for it by also installing a bar, spa and dining area inside that same pool house. Then in 2020, Rod had further ideas to install double glazed windows into his 18th century estate, but city planners would tell him that his idea was a no-go as it would affect the historical significance of the property. As for the interior of the home, well, since it's Rod's primary residence, the looks have come few and far between. However, Rod's wife Penny has occasionally posted images from inside their family home. For example, this look at their extremely plush living room full of regal looking and ornate armchairs, and Rod's trademarked gilded picture frames. Even their bedroom is filled to the brim with majesty. Take a look at this quilted headboard with silk curtain combo, not to mention the fringe bedside lights and vintage wall lights. The kitchen is opulent too, with cupboards painted a sophisticated shade of cream, alongside some classy marble floors and a marble worktop counter space. Finally, the Stewart home office is similar to a palatial library with grand wooden bookcases and plenty of antique books. Well there you have it, Rod Stewart's massive real estate portfolio in a nutshell. Which home of Rod's would you prefer to live in most? I'm sure his new English estate is breathtaking, but with the remarkable art collection he has in Beverly Hills, it's a hard choice. Be sure to let me know your answers down below. Thanks for watching. Follow me on Instagram to chat, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye!